Well, praise the Lord. Brian Hampton here at Holy Fire Ministries. Come to talk to you today about building up your most holy faith. Uh, you know, sometimes we look to people for encouragement, and we should, uh, because God gives us one another, brothers and sisters in the Lord, to encourage one another, uh, to pray for one another. That, that's part of our jobs as a Christian is to encourage one another and be there for one another. But there's just times when those people are not available. There's people. There's times when those people are tired themselves, they're weak themselves, and you need to get a prayer through. And and uh, you know, you you just need somebody to pray for you. But sometimes we have to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. When you know, even when times are difficult, we gotta just press on in and 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 pray and 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 and. Um, so you know, I want to talk to you today about you know a lot of us are in desert places. I feel like that people are just waiting on the Lord with patience, and you know I think that times are tough. I think that, uh, <clears throat> but God, I believe that God is doing something in us that is 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 more precious than silver and more precious than gold. And when, uh, praise God, we come through it, we're going to be ready for what God is getting ready to do in the earth. And I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I don't know when it's coming. I just know that we're in a process and that we're being changed and that we're being made more like the Lord is. We're taking on the character of the Lord if we're willing to go through this thing and, and to do it patiently and to trust in the Lord that when it's all said and done, that we're going to have our health, we're going to have our wealth, we're going to have our spiritual dynamics to be able to do the work uh, of the gospel for the perfecting of the saints, for the saving of the lost, uh, for all the things that God wants us to be doing as Christians. So, uh, you know, I, I'm convinced of this one thing, that the very thing that... Uh, we can be one of our greatest encouragers with the Lord's help. And uh, I'm going to start reading today in Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. It says, "Be," It says, But you, beloved, <clears throat> building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Have you ever heard somebody preach or, or you've been in a service and you're just like, I, I didn't really get what I needed. I really didn't get fed. You know, we've probably all been there and, and said that at, at some point or another. And, you know, maybe you, what, what you got now, the same old, same old, is just not fulfilling you. And God's calling you to a deeper walk with him. And, you know, a lot of times you look for stuff for man to give it to you. You look you look for man to bless you, to encourage you. But a lot of times man can't give you what you need or what you want. But God always has what you need and uh, what what he, he, what you want a lot of times if you go to him, he always has what you need. Uh, going to be reading in Romans 8 and verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The word infirmity means physical or mental weakness. I don't know about you, but I've had physical issues and mental weakness. You say, you admit to that? Yeah, I, I like to just be real with people because sometimes, you know, you have men speaking and they, they talk and almost like like they're talking down to you, like, I ain't never had no trouble. Well, we all have the same troubles for the most part. I mean, we all go through trials and tribulations. What's accomplished in me is accomplished in you, is accomplished in your other brother and your other sisters. So, yeah, I'm dealing with these things. But what I'm here to tell you is that uh, the word helpeth in the Greek means to take hold of together. So when the Spirit and you are in agreement and you're praying, then He can help your physical and your mental weaknesses. And He can help us when we, when we know not what to pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How about in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries? 
So, you know, we may think that we understand people through our intellectual observation, why they're the way they are, so forth and so on. But, you know, people go through things and, you know, a lot of people just keep stuff to their self and they go through some of the most horrific things that you could imagine. I remember my brother, this was before I was born, a couple of years before I was born, but uh, they were four and five years old. I got two half-brothers, and their mother walked out on them and just abandoned them and moved to Memphis. She didn't want to, nothing to do with them. She made sure that she got a good distance away. She didn't want the responsibilities anymore. Well, when they were about 13 or 14, uh, my dad didn't want the responsibility of them anymore either. He didn't want it to begin with, but maybe he was trying to do the right thing at some point. But at the end, he, he had left them in this TV shop to fend for themselves. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it was, you know, that, the, that they were totally alone, but he, would, he, was, he was across town with an, a woman that he wasn't married to, not raising his kids. Well, he didn't want the responsibility anymore, so he took my younger brother, and he drove the, my brother to Memphis, and my brother said he sat in the car while uh, my dad and his mother were out arguing about who was going to take the kid, and no, neither one of them wanted the boy. So he was abandoned by this woman at four years of age, and he was abandoned again by her at 13. She did not want anything to do with it. And my dad brought him back to town, and I think my at that time my grandmother stepped in and began to raise him and my brother until they were of age. And, you know, I began to think about what that must have done to my brother, you know, and, and how uh, challenging that was to be rejected by your own mother, by your own dad, you know, and... Uh, you know, as a terrible situation, but, you know, people go through stuff like that all the time, and, you know, especially this day and time, because uh, back then that was not something that was very common for a mother to have that kind of unnatural affection, but these days it's, it's a lot more common, and you probably know people. I know other people personally where the parent becomes strung out on dope and just left their kids for the parents to raise, and then, you know, and many times they come back later and they want to raise them and, and, and maybe they're better off than they were, but when they raise the kids, they usually aren't raising them right. So they kind of get a double whammy. But what I'm trying to say is you got people, all kinds of people in all walks of life, some people shooting dope into their arms, some people, uh, you know, not quite that serious. But, you know, all I'm saying is, that you really don't want to judge people because you really just do not understand what those people have went through. And, you know, I've seen people that are religious. I've seen people that are judgmental. I've seen people that say they are Christians, but they have not the love of God. And these are the kind of people that sometimes cause the people to go and, and to look for something else to fulfill them. That might be the very reason that... A lot of them stuck the needle in their arm to begin with. And I'm not making excuses for the people that do what they do. We all have to be held accountable for our own actions. I'm just saying that don't you say that, you know, uh, my sin's not as great as their sin because in God's eyes, sin is sin. And just because you were never on drugs, just because you were never maybe, uh, you know, loose with your morals sexually or, or maybe, you know, you, you never did this or did that, but, but you look at somebody else, but you did things, what is what I'm saying, that were just as bad as those people did in the eyes of God. And he forgave you. And he'll forgive them just as easily. Matter of fact, the Bible says, you know, he gives a comparison. He says, which of these two people do you think that loved the Lord more? And there was one that had a little sin, and there was one that had a lot of sin. And he, he said, well, I suppose the one that had a lot of sin in their life, they're the ones that love him most because they were forgiven more. And he says, you have rightly said. So, you know what? Don't have no taste in my mouth for self-righteous people or for people that said, oh, I'd never do anything like that. Well, 
the thing is, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned, and we all had to come to Jesus to get saved. So you better be careful in how you're judging other people. Let me find my place here. I'll just tell you this. We can't even begin to understand the complexities of the mind we can't begin to understand the spirits that work in people's lives because of the things that were done to them. And you may, you know, we've got people in the church with spirits of anger, a spirit of pride. We've got people with a spirit of jealousy. And, you know, we've got people committing uh, all kinds of, of bad acts. And we need to be praying for one another, you know, because these problems are serious. And we may think that we understand why they are. We may look at it and it aggravates us, don't it, when people are arrogant, when they're prideful. But what we need to do is we need to be able to find that mercy that God had towards us and pray that effectual fervent prayer and pray in the Spirit because the Spirit prays for those things that we do not know. It gets to the root, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and Verse 15 says, What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So we pray in the the best we can in our English language or whatever language it is that you speak, and then we pray in the Spirit perfectly. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Edification means to instruct or improve the mind in knowledge generally and particularly in moral and religious knowledge, in faith and holiness to encourage, to elevate someone's spirit. And I don't know anybody that can't use more of that. I have met some people that think they're the thing, you know, seem like they don't have any issues, but I can assure you at some point in their life, they're going to need to be encouraged if they're really Christians. They're going to go through some trouble because, praise God, even though Jesus were the perfect Lamb of God, He learned obedience through the things that He suffered. So, yeah, I'll take all the edification. You know, you got people that chase, chase prophets, and, and I'm not saying you should do that, but these people are prophecy junkies, if you will, because everybody likes to hear a good word right hey it's all getting ready to end uh, good things are coming to your life and and you know especially when people know things about you that they have no way of knowing unless it was through the spirit of god revealing it unto them then you know that they have truly heard from the lord and you become encouraged because you know that uh, your trouble's not always going to be so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, no, I, I, I'm sorry, I missed my place here. So, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I'll take all the encouragement I can get. The Bible says, so he who speaks in tongues speaks to God and not to man. Uh, when we speak in tongues, we build ourselves up, we strengthen ourselves. You know, you see it on TV, if you've ever been to a gym, you'll see guys and you know, they've got big old arms, right? And, and they look good. You know, they, you know, uh, muscles are better than droopy, right? You know, uh, so they build themselves up, though, because it enhances their appearance. It, it gives them physical strength. It gives them endurance. And they like the way that they look and so forth and so on. Some men are always, you know, going on about their muscles and, and everything and they're real macho. And that's okay, you know, whatever. But, but they're doing it for a reason. And it's, it's usually a healthy, uh, you know, they, they want a better health. They want a better look. And they want a more endurance and so forth and so on. And, and that's what God's trying to get across to us. That if we'll pray in the Spirit, that it will edify us. That it will build us up. That it will strengthen us. That it will cause us to be overcomers. That it will cause us to be victorious. The Bible says that he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. It says praying in the Spirit strengthens our connection with God. I want the best relationship I can have with God because He is the source of life. He is the source. You know, I can face tomorrow because He lives. Because I know that, praise God, He's got control of my life. If I didn't have that comfort of knowing that God had my back, that He holds my tomorrow, uh, I would... 
I would not fare well, I can assure you, and neither would you. Uh, Ephesians 3 and verse 16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that all might be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants us to be blessed. God wants us to be successful. He wants us to be full of joy. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to be effective in ministry. He wants us to be able to do the works that even Jesus himself did. And he's trying to get us there. He wants to give us all fullness of life. So praise God. Praying in tongues releases miraculous intercession. If all you're doing is praying, then that's great. It's great. But when you pray in the natural and you pray in tongues, it, it, is, a, it is the ultimate assistance to prayer. Because, you know, I may have back trouble, and I think it's my back needs help, but maybe my foot hurts, and I'm favoring one side of my body over the other I'm limping maybe and because I'm limping it's throwing everything else off and it's causing my back to hurt and I'm praying for my back but really what the spirit would pray for because it understands what the real problem is is it prays for my foot so when my foot gets better I quit favoring one foot over the other I begin to walk normally and then my back quits hurting so that's why we pray in the natural to the best of our understanding to the best of our ability and then we pray in the spirit or we pray in tongues you know truth is i really didn't want to preach this message but god doesn't ask me to do things he tells me to do things and of course we all have a free will to reject uh god's you know what he asks us uh, tells us to do but you know that that not an option for me and it's really not for you either uh, but he does give us a free will but I just felt well I felt you know that the Lord told me to do it number one and you know I've heard a lot of people over the years saying I used to pray in tongues all the time you know and they've let it go you know they got out of the habit if you will I hate to say it like that, but they, they just got out of the habit. You know, faith. the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, you know, we have to put works with our faith. So we can have good intentions to do something, but if we don't do it, it will not benefit us. So if faith comes by hearing, then it's something that we have to do from the time that we get saved to the time that we go to be with the Lord because it says faith comes by hearing, which is something that is repetitive over and over. So, you know, we might have got to the point where we used to fast a lot, where we used to pray a lot, where we used to do a lot of ministry, where we used to help a lot, do certain things, but we let it slip and we're no longer doing that. And I feel like there's a lot of people that don't understand the significance of praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. They don't realize how much it will edify them, how much it will encourage them, how much that it will cause them to be victorious. And not only that, but to get your prayers answered. Because not only are you praying to God in the natural, but you're praying to Him in a language that that the Spirit is speaking through you and is speaking directly to God and you're bypassing the devil altogether because he does not understand. It's forbidden for him to be able to understand what that language is because it is the Spirit uh, praying through you directly to God. You know, I had a friend one time and he said, I prayed in tongues tonight, first time in a long time in a service. It was a good spiritual service. And I said, well, you know, I said, you can pray in tongues anytime you want. And I, I don't think he understood that at the time. And I don't know if he understands that to this day. But, you know, it, it, you've been in services before. You've been in situations where people are like, pray in your prayer language you know where maybe a, a, a an evangelist or a preacher is up and and there's this demonic attack 
uh, trying to stop the Spirit of God from moving in a service, and he, and they say, begin to pray in your prayer language or something of that nature. And when the, and when the people do, it breaks the power that the enemy was coming against the service with, and it causes the power of God to begin to move because you prayed a perfect prayer that God understood, and he began to act upon your perfect prayer, and it broke the power of the enemy. So uh, I think that the Bible tells us to pray continually, and it, you know, I would tell you to pray continually. Paul said, what, what I'm trying to tell you, he said, I pray with my understanding, and then I pray in the Spirit. I pray with my understanding, and I pray in tongues. Uh, so anyways, I pray that this encourages you. I pray that it will help your prayer life, that it will help, you know, to build you up, to encourage you, and to strengthen you, because times are difficult, but praise God, we've not been left without uh, help. God give us His Spirit, and He has given us tongues, and He has given us all the weapons that we know throughout the Bible that we have to take authority over the devil, to put the devil to flight, to put the devil under our feet, to be successful and victorious. So anyways, I pray that you be blessed this week that's coming up, that the Lord protect you and keep you, and that uh, anyways, just go with God. Amen.